So the Code Vein DLC, Hellfire Night, is now out. Uh, it kind of came out a couple days ago, kind of quietly. I don't know if anyone saw it. Um, but in this video, we're going to kind of cover what's new with the DLC and what you can expect from it. So the first thing is, if you have the Hellfire Night DLC installed after you defeat Mito, if you go through his room there and down the stairs, underneath the stairs, you're going to find a door, and through the door, you're going to find a map to the depths, which is for Fire Ray Oblivion, which is the new area, and you'll also find a new blood coat. Once you have that map, you can head back to home base and talk to Davis, and then you'll be able to go into that uh, depth. And inside the depth, you'll find a you know, new area to explore, a couple of new blood coats, and also the Hellfire Knight. The entire DLC essentially revolves around fighting the Hellfire Knight, doing certain challenges, trying not to get hit, doing a certain amount of damage, increasing the difficulty of him and beating him, doing a, you know, a pipe-only run, things like this in order to get rewards. There are three new blood codes, and essentially they fill three roles. There's Tank, Strength DPS, and Dexterity DPS. Achilles is the Dexterity DPS, Cert is the Strength DPS, and Asclepius is the Tank blood code. Of these three blood codes, the two notable ones are Achilles and Cert because they have S plus scaling in uh, Dexterity and Strength, which, uh, to my knowledge, no other blood code has by default. The downside to these blood codes is that they don't have particularly good other stats, other attributes, so you're still going to have to invest passives in order to get, like, mined up in order to use Bridge to Glory, etc., etc. So they're not the best blood codes in the game, even though they do have very, very good scaling. Even the skills they give you are okay. They're not terrible, but you can master them and then take them into a better blood code. So that's what I would advise doing if you want to use some of the skills from them. Now, as far as weapons and blood veils go, there are four new weapons. A pipe, one-handed sword, two-handed great sword, and a hammer. And there are three blood veils. The three blood veils are a strength uh, dark gifts one, which is kind of like a tanky one for tanks who want to use dark magic. Uh, a strength scaling one and a dexterity scaling one. Both of these I'm not sure we'll see a whole lot of use. Um, I don't know how many people go for like a strength backstab build. The dex one might be useful for that sort of build though. The Ruinous Chevalier has slightly less gift scaling than the um, Suicide Spur. So you're probably not going to use that if you're playing a mage build. Also, it's got exceptionally heavy weight. So again, it's going to be one you're playing if you're playing a, a tank caster type build. Of the weapons, the one-handed sword is pure drink scaling, which is great. Uh, you have a hammer that's pure deck scaling, which is interesting if you want to make a hammer or dex build, and a greatsword that's also deck scaling. I didn't get the pipe. I was working on doing the run to get it. You have to beat the boss getting not hit, not using any items with only a pipe. So I was like two hits away from doing it earlier. Haven't quite completed it. I'm going to do that and get the pipe later. There's also a pipe. I'm not sure what the stats on it, but I'm not expecting it to be amazing. What these new weapons do is they kind of fill in a gap, allowing you to play a dexterity uh, blood code while using some heavy weapons like the hammer and the greatsword. There's already good uh, dex one-handed, so that's not the end of the world or the, the best thing ever, but it is a very good dex one-handed sword, and it looks fucking awesome. Other than that, the rewards you gain are mostly cosmetic. There isn't anything super notable. Uh, you can take the difficulty all the way up to 10, which if you go up to 1, like the default difficulty is supposedly enhanced NG+, and then just taking up to 1 is NG plus 7. So all the way up to 10, I don't even know how hard that would be. Uh, and then there's, of course, an achievement for beating it on that difficulty without getting hit. So good luck trying that. Based on the way this DLC is and the fact that some of the blood code skills uh, for one of them are locked behind the other... Uh, DLCs, I'm fairly certain the other DLCs are going to be very similar. They're going to be a uh, depth with a boss at the end. I'm just guessing, but I cannot really see how they would be different. Hopefully I'm wrong there, but having three DLCs is essentially having named almost exactly the same way and having overlapping blood code uh, skills to get them unlocked really seems like there's just going to be two more bosses and two different depths, if I had to guess. I assume there'll be more weapons, probably, you know, there's an ice one, I imagine there'll be some ice weapons, uh, or, you know, that have like a frost look to them, um, and we'll see what else there is, I imagine there'll be more blood coats, etc. Uh, and we also have a boss video up on the Hellfire Knight if you need help with that, but that's basically the gist of the DLC. Nothing has really changed dramatically enough with the game for me to do any more builds, so I'm not gonna, like, make any more builds with the new blood codes. I don't think they're that much better or worse than anything else we've been using. So if you're making a build and you incorporate one of the new blood codes, it's going to look very, very similar to what you're already using with slightly better scaling with dexterity or strength. There's no word yet on exactly when the next two DLCs are going to come out. It just says sometime early 2020. But once they come out, we'll do some coverage on those as well.